afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to our uh, National Student Gathering. Um, I hope you had a peaceful lunch, a restful lunch, if you're blessed with some sunshine like we are here today, uh, just outside of Toronto, then I hope you got some fresh air as well. Uh, this, after, this first session after the break is a chance for us to hear from some of our urban Inuit associations. Um, I think this will be a great opportunity for some of our students or some of us to learn more about where they are, who they are, put a face to the organization, um, and to hear about all the fantastic things and supports that students and prospective students can reach out to for. Before we introduce our speakers, I wanted to remind everyone of the chat function in the presentation. So please, please put some questions, some comments in the chat. Um, just before we get started, I want to note for the presenters that we've got uh, some comments in here already. So I'll, I'll read those out as we go along, but we've got some high school students and a teacher up from Joe Haven. Uh, we've got people from Gatineau, uh, people working for the Coast Guard, Regina's here, and uh, yo, someone else from TI is here too. So that's great. Um, I'm going to ask Amanda Kilabuck from TI in Ottawa to introduce herself and say a little bit about what her organization does. Unlukut, Amanda Kilabuck, you might take a more to see you might have music in that Inuit. With me, good afternoon. My name is Amanda Kilabuck, and I'm the executive director at Music in that Inuit. We're a nonprofit charitable organization that provides uh, programs and services for Inuit uh, living in Ontario. Um, we have a range of programs that start from prenatal to two elders. And so what I'd like to highlight is um, the programs that we offer for post-secondary um, students. Now, although we don't um, access any funding from the Inuit post-secondary education funding, we do provide a lot of pro um, services and help and assistance for any Inuit, regardless if they live within Inuit Nunungat, uh, whether they are true urban Inuits that haven't um, lived in Inuit Nunungat, we provide uh, application assistance. We have an employment center where we have two employment counselors that can help uh, students uh, find their academic path, uh, help assist with uh, applications to look for funding. Um, and also through our ISETS program, our Indigenous Skills Employment Training um, Strategy funds, we are able to assist students with their tuition, living expenses, books, um, childcare costs. We recognize that um, wraparound supports are needed. Um, other things that we do here at TI that um, post-secondary students may not realize is that we also participate on Indigenous Education Councils. So these councils inform uh, post-secondary institutions on how to incorporate Indigenous cultures and in particular uh, Inuit culture into their, um, into their uh, Indigenous centers uh, in terms of hiring Indigenous faculty, uh, curriculum development, um, they, they work with TI in terms of providing Inuktitut signage. So there's a lot of ways that TI uh, supports um, Inuit students in the Ottawa area and across um, Ontario. Uh, speaking of the Indigenous Education Councils, we sit on the Carleton University, um, IEC, the Algonquin College, um, Ottawa University and Queen's University. We also, um, with K-12, for our uh, urban Inuit students, we, we liaison with the Indigenous um, councils there with the different school boards um, across Ontario, um, but with a main focus in, uh, in Ottawa. Um, so our vision to support students, no matter where they reside, whether they're in Inuit Inunat, or uh, they are um, urban elite is to provide the wraparound supports because as a former PSC student myself, I realize how disconnected um, students feel when you're in a large campus, whether you're coming home, um, going to school from 
from a small town uh, in Inu Munangat, it's, it's very, um, there's a culture shock and there needs to be more additional wraparound supports. Um, and urban Inuit organizations are filling in the gaps of, of um, those funding streams that, that may provide students money. But what I feel and what I see is a need for Inuit students to get the additional wraparound supports, whether it is cultural programming, whether it is um, fund, like, uh, looking for funding, it is extremely hard for urban Inuit to find funding because everything is uh, residency based or it is um, land claim based. And, and so the mandate at TI is to to assist any Inuit, self-identified Inuit, uh, regardless of um, land claim association or beneficiary status or where they reside. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks for that. Um, and just before we move on to the next speaker, I just for our presenters here, uh, we've got a few more comments in the chat. We have. Um, Kendra from Inuvik, who's working for IRC and also taking online courses at Mohawk College. Uh, Ali and I wants to say, nice to see your face, Amanda. And Sky is, is joining us from Yellowknife, originally from Kukuluktuk, and she works with the NWT Native Women's Association. So I'm gonna introduce our next speaker, uh, Brian Winters from the Toronto Inuit Association, and I should probably say the Toronto association you can if you want i'm i'm constantly actually um uh, called out for still pronouncing every single letter in that word uh i'm i'm from goose bay labrador you know like toronto just feels weird to me um so atira brino avunga labrador imiok sayo yunga toronto mu mu vunga um, it's always very hard to go after Amanda Hillebuck because her uh, her spiel is just so good, and uh, and she knows her programs and her organization so well. Um, but anyway, my name is Brian Winters, and I am the executive director of the Toronto Inuit Association. I'm an Inuk man of both Nunatsiavumiuk and Irish Newfoundland settler descent, and my father's families are Edmonds and Winters, originally from Makovic, um, but I grew up in Happy Valley Goose Bay, Labrador. Um, so the, the scope and scale of the Toronto Inuit Association, as opposed to a place like Tunga Savinga Inuit, is, uh, is, is drastic. We have a much larger city and a much smaller um, population uh, of Toronto Mute. So the, the primary function of our organization when we began, uh, we incorporated in 2016, um, the idea was to try and provide as much cultural um, programming and advocacy for uh, Toronto Mute as possible. And the, the big difference between us and many other organizations um, and many other cities, I should really say, is that there is a very strong Indigenous network of organizations and nonprofits who are already doing so much of this great work. So the goal of TIA is more to influence them in a positive way and make sure that our Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, um, Huron, Wendat cousins um, that are providing these services around the city are doing so in a way that is safe for Inuit from all regions. Um, so we have a, a, a growing population here. If you were to follow uh, Statistics Canada during the last census, they would say that there's about 1,300. Inuit in Toronto in the GTA. And um, if you were to follow what the, the service providers say, it's more like three times that. Um, so we've established an urban community for Inuit from all regions. Uh, we provide support and a network for language learning, cultural practices, arts, wellness, family services, employment services, health services. So we try and distinguish our voices and culture within the larger Indigenous community here while still creating awareness about Inuit art, music, activism, collaborations, and professional achievements in Toronto and across Canada. Um, we, we've made sure that because Toronto is kind of a, 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 a you know, very large hub of urban Inuit, um, that we that we aren't necessarily playing to any one region or territory most of the time. 
my family is personally from Nunatsiavut, but our staff and board have representation representation from the Inuvialuit settlement region, uh, Nunavut, Nunavik, um, and even a Greenlandic Canadian uh, just joined our board. So we try and be as as wholesome in terms of fulsome, I should say, in terms of reflecting um, a, a a much broader scope of Inuit. Toronto isn't a direct flight from any of our regions or any of our cities. Um, you know, in Halifax or St. John's, you might have primarily Nunatsiavumut. In Montreal, you would have mostly people from Nunavik. Um, Ottawa, you would have a lot of uh, Nunavumut and, uh, and so on. So here, chances are people have already moved to an urban center. They've lived there for a while. They've decided that it's something that they like and then they've decided to move on to a larger urban center. And in this country, you don't get a larger urban center than Toronto. Um, so we have a lot of difficulties that people face here, um, but we have a lot of positives that we're bringing forward too. We are a growing uh, community, growing organization, and we do receive a lot of support from um, the provincially mandated Tungasavinga and Inuit um, in order to provide a lot of our services. Um, so kind of when I joined this organization, my goal was essentially to become the Inuit Yellow Pages in Toronto. Uh, if we can't offer all of the services, and chances are we can't at this point, we can at least direct you to who we know can provide those services to you safely. Um, we don't have specific programming at this point that is aimed and geared directly to students but we do try and support all Inuit in Toronto in every way, shape, um, way and shape possible. So we offer, um, we, we kind of built all of our programming off of three different pillars. Uh, one is wellness, which is physical and mental well-being. Um, we have cultural programming and we have quality of life programming, by which I mean um, employment assistance, uh, funding for the precariously housed or homeless, um, and we can get into a little bit more of that later, but the way that we work at this point is almost on an ad hoc basis. If someone has something that they need and they want to reach out to us, we can, if we can't provide that service or um, that product to them, we can at least let them know where they can find it and help navigate the city because a lot of the difficulties of living in this, this large metropolis is just knowing where to go and how to get things safely. Nakamik. Thank you, Brian. That was great. Um, great to hear. Yeah, you're right. It's such a big, sprawling city. Um, thank you. We are going to move a little bit west over to Manitoba, and I'm going to ask Andrea Popoff from the Manitoba Inuit Association. Hi, and a little bit about her organization. Hi there, thank you for having me. My name is Andrea Popoff. I'm originally from Rankin Inlet. I work at Manitoba Inuit Association as a student support worker. Um, so Manitoba Inuit Association has been around for a while. Our mission is to enhance the lives of Inuit in Manitoba by promoting Inuit values, community, and culture while connecting to services that meet our evolving needs. Our goals are to build a vibrant Manitoba Inuit community by connecting Inuit through activities and initiatives that sustain and build Inuit culture, values, and language. We also want to assist in improving education, employment, and training outcomes for Inuit in Manitoba. We also help develop research by um, making partnerships that help improve and improve the health status for Inuit in Manitoba. Um, we also want to improve housing and food security for Manitoba in food, sorry, improve housing and food security for Inuit in Manitoba and foster organizational capacity and innovation. Um, and to talk specifically about my job, um, I'll give you a brief overview. So we are working with Manitoba-based institutions to meet the following training, employment, and educational objectives. 
So we want to help in increasing the number of Inuit accessing funding for post-secondary education, because as discussed earlier, it is hard to find funding for Inuit living out of Inuit Nunangat. Um, it's always a struggle and it's a continuing struggle. And we understand that. So I know that's a main focus. Um, we also want to help provide orientation services to new Inuit students arriving in Manitoba and Winnipeg, develop retention services to assist Inuit students to successfully complete their studies and increase the number of Inuit accessing employment and training services in Manitoba. Um, we also want to be the students to go people to go people, whether it's getting more information about the schools here, uh, finding stores, events in the city, or filling out applications, um, finding part-time employment, housing. We are available to assist um, meeting their needs while they're attending school in any area, really. Um, if we can't find that um, within our own organization, then we'll go out and find the resources for you, or we will refer you to our partnerships here in Manitoba. Um, so, you know, we Manitoba Inuit's association's goal is to really enhance the lives of Inuit in Manitoba. Um, so it, it, we really do try to promote our Inuit values, community and culture while connecting to the services that meet our evolving needs. Um, just, just some examples of what we have done. Um, you know, if you also look at our virtual booth, you will see I had attached some documents there. Uh, we ran an academic workshop for high school and post-secondary students in the summer of 2019. So the students got to tour the University of Manitoba to get an idea of what different studies and career paths are available. They got to uh, tour the Indigenous Business Education Partners with the Asper School of Business. Um, they saw the Engineering Access Program, the Faculty of Health Sciences, and looking at what my like, College of Rehabilitation Sciences is about along with um, touring the College of Dentistry, College of Pharm Pharmacy, and they got to visit the Indigenous Center. Um, before the pandemic, we also did run an after-school mentorship program, um, but uh, unfortunately, because of the pan pandemic, we haven't been able to continue that program. But to give you an idea, we did run it after school and it was in the evenings and we really wanted to help connecting students together. So, you know, we have that um, community and form that community. Um, we wanted to connect both high school students and post-secondary students. Um, so we did stuff like sewing, um, and it was really basically what the students were interested in. We asked them what they wanted to do. And so sewing was one of the examples. And we were able to have a tour at the Winnipeg Art Gallery. It was really nice because it was just our group there. So, um, and we would also invite guest speakers to come in and talk to the students about many opportunities available out there. Um, even another example was we had someone come in um, from the Canadian Mental Health Association. We also had somebody come in from the University of Manitoba from the engineering department to talk about their engineering um, courses. Um, uh, before my time, I know that my colleague would go to the University of Winnipeg to have potlucks with students there. She would bring Inuit food like Arctic char, caribou, and I believe they had an elder um, drum dance and someone throat singing. Um, so really, we we do we do what students are interested in and want to do. So the more input from students is the better. So that way the programming is geared more to their interest. Um, and currently right now, um, we are still supporting students. You can just email us or call us. 
Uh, right now, we have been assisting some students during this pandemic with emergency food hampers, um, check-in supports, and also funding. And I also just wanted to mention um, right now, Manitoba Inuit Association is having a pre-registration right now for uh, COVID vaccines. So if you go to our website or Facebook page, you'll have more information there. Um, you can do it online or you can call or we can print um, the application form, registration form and bring it to you. So if you have any more questions, you can contact us for sure. Um, and I think that's it for me. Thank you for having me. If you have any questions, please call and email. I'm glad to help. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. That was great. So good to hear um, what's happening over in your organization. I wanted to introduce our fourth speaker, Jenny McCray from the Edmonton Inuit Association. Hi, Jenny now My name is Janine. I'm from Kogluktuk uh, in Western Inuit. So I want to acknowledge first that I'm speaking to you today from Treaty 6 territory in Edmonton, Alberta. Kwana to ITK for gathering us together to share and learn. And Kwana to Inuit leaders from Eastern Canada. Both Amanda and Brian have been mentoring us over here in Alberta so we can create space that is welcoming and inclusive of Inuit. I'm a volunteer for the Inuit Edmonton Mute Working Group. We have worked through the past year to develop our approach and adopt more of an Inuit-specific governance structure that better serves Inuit Edmonton Mute. Our newly formed not-for-profit called Inuit Community Development and Education Foundation is an Inuit-led organization. We're committed to supporting and enhancing the health and, health and well-being and the knowledge and skills of Inuit who live outside of Inuit Nunungat. We want to have Inuit specific educational and cultural programming and other services that are needed when you move to the city or attend school here. If you have to travel to the city or want to live in the city, um, attending school here can be a lot of work to navigate through and we want to be able to support Inuit students. So um, we also are working to provide cultural programming um, and food security uh, is an issue right now for those facing um, um, hard times due to COVID um, and, and loss of employment and um, yeah, cost of living is, is tough in the city and uh, we wanna be able to you know, provide resources for, for those, like I said, who wanna attend school here uh, or move here. Um, if you um, are you know, living in rural Alberta as well, there's, there's lack of services in Western Canada. So, um, Part of, part of the work that we're doing is, is learning uh, from, from those in the East and, and from our Inuit leaders in Inuit Nungat. So um, and ITK is, is wonderful at supporting and, and gathering us all together. So again, thank you and um, yeah, open to questions if, if you're thinking of going to school here. Um, yeah, or if you're in the city and you wanna volunteer, uh, we have a Facebook page, Inuit Edmonton Mute Working Group. Um, there you can contact one of our volunteers or um, learn about resources in, in the city and in Alberta. Kwana. Thank you for those introductions, everyone. Um, I can already see there's a number of questions in our chat. Um, so I'm going to read this one out for you. Um, it says, hello, I attended FNTI in Ontario. I was not sure how to connect with other Inuit. It's located approximately halfway between Ottawa and Toronto. Uh, what's the best way to find connections? I don't know if anyone can respond to that one. Hi, yeah, um, thank you so much for that question. I'm actually an FNTI student. Uh, so uh, I'm doing the public administration and governance program uh, through FNTI and Ryerson University, um, which is amazing. And it's, you know, a 100% native class. Um, but 
unlike you know every other university course that I've taken, I'm I'm still the only Inuk in most of those classes. Um, but we do have another person from Ikhali who's in uh, in a couple of them with me. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're at FNTI, if you're in Tyndanaga or Kingston, um, please reach out to us um, and and also TI of course. But I'll let Amanda say that. Um, mostly because right now, of course, we've had to pivot all of our programming for the pandemic. We've done an, an incredibly, I would say, excessive amount of virtual programming, so much so that we kind of decided to dial it back in the fall just because Zoom fatigue is very real and uh, you can only spend so much time in front of a screen. Um, but we do have at least four different Zoom events a week. Um, so please reach out to us, please engage with that. Uh, if you want to add us on Facebook, I think we all know that Inuit are on Facebook more than any other platform. So please join our page, follow our page on Instagram as well. And you can see plenty of the stuff that we're doing. Um, because of the way that we've expanded our programming during the pandemic, we're fairly certain that it makes too much sense and it gives us too much growth of our community to actually roll it back to exclusively in-person services. So at no point do we intend to actually completely end our virtual programming. So although we have a very small footprint and we're physically based in Toronto, you're certainly welcome to join our programming and, and reach out to us for different services if they can be of help to you. Now, Great, thanks, Brian. I think we'll uh, pass it over to Amanda. Hi, um, thank you for that question. And so we have a, uh, a couple of different uh, ways to connect. Um, if it's regarding cultural programming, then you can contact um, our cultural programs. If you visit our website, um, they, I think we have our staff list available. Um, and I do understand that uh, whatever funding you do get, it may not cover the bill. So we do have, um, a food security program where we offer um, gift cards for individuals that may need the extra support, especially during the pandemic. And right now we support over a thousand uh, in need across Ontario uh, with gift cards every month. Um, and then also even before the pandemic, and, and it's really important that there are Inuit representation on Indigenous Education Councils is uh, when I attended one in it, Queens, I was able to, you know, offer country food because I was going to Kingston anyways. And so just having that kind of network. Um, but having said that, um, it's connecting with our employment um, team because right now we don't have uh, education staff because we don't have the funding right yet to, to provide those uh, additional supports. But if we, if you connect with our employment team, I know Jordan is in the chat. Um, then we can we can try and customize uh, whatever um, programs or services that you may need. Emma. Thanks, Amanda. Um, a question for all of the panelists to think about and, and share. Um, can you speak a little bit to housing and relocating to a city? I know that can be a new and scary experience for all of us. Um, what supports you have or uh, maybe common issues that you see coming up with in post-secondary students as they're making that move to a city? Um, I don't know if anyone wants to volunteer or I'll just, oh, thanks, Amanda. Hi, so I think, you know, when I attended the ITK National Gathering for post-secondary students, and there was many regions that that represent um, the programs and services that they provide. And, and I know in Quebec, um, they, they meet um, the individuals and I know NS here at Ottawa do meet the, the Inuit students in at the airports and, and then kind of provide that um, that kind of uh, warm welcoming. welcoming. Um, going back to what I said in the beginning in terms of providing wraparound supports, um, funding or funders should recognize that if just, you know, the, the tuition and the living expenses that students need, um, having traveled thousands of miles away from your home community and landing into, 
um, a big city is extremely scary. And having that warm, welcoming, um, Inuit support, Inuit specific uh, support is much uh, appreciated. I, I I remember telling I think some some of my colleagues is is I would envision a program, and I have uh, I haven't seen it yet. Um, where we can have foster families um, in larger centers where we can kind of adopt um, Inuit students so that we can help them um, move into their um, dorm residences to go to Walmart and kind of uh, personalize their room that students have that extra um, money so that they can buy, you know, the bedding, the, you know, the hot plates or, or whatever they need in order to make their rooms feel like home. And so I know, um, but that associates with with priorities and uh, funding um, uh, funding priorities. But I would love to see uh, programs like that. I do know that housing is an issue. It's not just an issue within Inuit Nunungat. Um, Ottawa has declared a housing um, crisis, and so it's really hard for students to find um, to find affordable housing. Demo. Thanks, Amanda. Oh, Brian, please go ahead. Yeah, and um, I I do love that idea a lot, Amanda. The idea of of being able to meet in person at the airport and bring people. Um, of course, Toronto is a long way from being on the other side of this pandemic, even though our community is is being inoculated at this point. Um, the one thing that Tia has been able to achieve at this point in that regard. Um, is that we do? We are funded by the Reaching Home program by the uh, government of Canada. So the Reaching Home program allows for um, anyone who is under um, LICO, which is the the low income cutoff, to receive funding from us for help with first and last month's rent, with moving expenses, with furnishings, with filling your fridge, um, all kinds of different things that are really a huge barrier, um, like. Amanda was saying in terms of Ottawa being in the middle of a housing crisis, it's absolutely unbelievable here. It's it's one of the, the largest barriers to living in Toronto is the housing issue. Um, I lived in Montreal for four years prior to moving here and the, the most I ever, the, the largest apartment I ever had, I should say, was in Montreal and I paid less than the smallest apartment I've ever had here in Toronto. Um, it is, incredibly difficult. Um, the, the real benefit though is that we are able to put you in line with all kinds of different opportunities in this city, whether they be speaking opportunities, cultural uh, workshop presentation, um, there's all kinds of translation opportunities available if, if people are bilingual um, and speak a dialect of Inuktu. So there are options and we do have partners um, like Wigwaman and Nishnave Homes um, and other housing providers that that you know will let our people in there and we can kind of put in a word to make sure that uh, you're you're on the shorter list let me put it that way um, but absolutely it is it is very difficult um, housing is is a real issue in um, both of these cities right now 100 percent not me Thanks, Brian. Thanks for that. I'm going to ask Andrea or Janine if they have any thoughts on, you know, what they've observed as students are relocating to a city, um, either with housing or other supports or other common issues that they're seeing their students experience. I think Andrea, you want to share? Hi. Um, so it can be quite a bit of a challenge, I would say for sure, um, especially if you're new coming into the city and all by yourself, it can be quite in intimidating. Um, so what we can do is we can steer you to the right supports that do already have that um, readily available resources. Um, I, if, but again, I'm sorry, I'm gonna steer you again to our virtual booth. There's a lot of resources there listed. So that is something we would assist you with in, in the application process. Um, you know, if, if you're, if you don't have a computer or laptop at home first, um, you know, we can help with that. Um, 
Sorry, and with the relocation part, um, um, it can be quite hard. And usually I find with most students, they're getting funding for that already. Um, and so we also want to provide that orientation services, as I talked about earlier. Um, and, and it can be really anything that you want help in. Like if you don't know the Winnipeg Transit bus system, we can go over that with you. Um, just simple little things like that I know can be hard. Um, so really, if there's anything you need help in, um, it doesn't have to be pinpoint. We're not gonna shoo you away. Just come to us and ask us and we'll try our best in helping you in anything you need, really. I hope I covered everything there. Thema. Great, thank you. Thanks, Andrea. Um, Janine, I'm not sure if you have anything else to add there. Yep, thank you. Um, so we don't currently have uh, a space. Uh, we, we do uh, offer, um, sometimes we, we gather in, in rental spaces, but that's something we're working on to provide us you know, a specific space for where you can actually go to and, and with these questions. But right now we, we, we virtually connect and, and use social media and we use uh, email and, and phone. So we're, we're available through uh, those methods, but we, we have students in, in our volunteer group who know how to navigate through these, these struggles that, um, you know, people face on a daily basis. Even when you live here, there's, you know, changes in, in things that you have to keep track of and, and um, just being connected with, with others uh, anyway in the city is what we, Hope to offer. So there's always other Inuit and, and you can ask for help and um, you know all across the country here we're, we're trying to build that network so uh, it's great to um, hear what other places have to offer and um, you know we're the same way we want to be able to do that and um, be open and, and anything you need we'll figure it out and, and yeah. Thanks Janine. Um, I don't know, Brian, if you wanted to add anything to your earlier thoughts about moving to the city. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess so. What I can say is that when I was coming on with Tia, like I had, I had previously worked with the Nassatook Corporation across Inuit Nunungat. I had been with the Inuit Art Foundation here in Toronto for a short while. Um, and when joining on with a, a community organization, one of the main things that I essentially wanted to see us do is provide the kind of supports that I didn't have for myself when I initially went to university in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, I didn't, I didn't see myself or my home community in in anything in Halifax. It was you know black and white. Um, after Halifax, I moved to Montreal. After that, I moved to Toronto. So I just keep moving to bigger cities. And uh, some of these cities have some supports and some of them don't. So what I wanted from Toronto was for us to be able to provide that safe landing pad for Inuit who are moving here, either from other lateral moves, uh, other larger cities, or even from the north, um, small communities of 200 to 600 people. I wanted people to still feel that strength of community when they got here, of being able to gather for feasts, of getting together to sew together, um, do different programming. And another thing that I thought was um, was a, a huge impact on, on my mental well-being and physical well-being when I moved was um, just that I was so physically active when I lived at home. And I think that that's the same case for a lot of people, that when you move to... Um, when you move to a large center like this, you can feel kind of boxed in. You don't have the same kind of outlet of, uh, of being on the land that so many of us do when we're at home. So we came up with a physical well-being program um, that right now, of course, is all virtual. But very soon, we're hoping to essentially help people get out, be active, and just communicate with other Inuit. I think one of the biggest things that is a real barrier for Inuit in urban centers is that we don't necessarily know where each other are. We don't get to see Inuit faces on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, uh, it's defeating. 
when everyone in the place where you live no longer resembles everyone who lived in the place where you used to. Um, but yeah, so we, we do have multiple supports in many different ways. Um, but if there's something specific that people in the GTA need or people moving to the GTA need, please let us know. And it's certainly something that we can make happen. Not me. Thanks, Brian. Oh, I think Amanda. I see, I see there's a chat going on here. And just yeah. before we start, Amanda, uh, to remind everyone, we've got about 15 minutes left in our session. So please do take this opportunity to ask some questions in the chat. Okay, thanks. I think the beauty of having a panel is uh, like, if you go first, then you hear everybody else speak after and then you're like, oh yes, I forgot this. So in terms of relocation, I mean, we do provide a lot of programming, whether it's counseling, addiction services. Um, we do try and, and uh, provide a referral service to academic tutors. And I know that Imu uh, Patikit was uh, supposed to attend. Um, and they provide a lot of services in Ottawa as well. Um, and we also, with our employment center, we also provide um, supports like transportation for post-secondary students if they receive uh, employment over the summer. Um, but in terms of relocation, I think the best way, and we did have this funding through the ministry um, before it ended, is we had a group event. So we had um, Thanksgiving suppers. Um, we um, arranged um, events at uh, escape rooms. Um, and we tried to build a community. And it's really hard, as what Brian had said, to build a community in uh, a population of over a million people in in the greater Ottawa area. So we're, we're trying to, to reach out because it's hard because we don't have that um, connections with our with the post-secondary funders. So we don't know who is is in the landscape of our, our demographics. So um, we just try and create programs and services. And that's why it's very important for um, you guys, the students, to let us know what kind of programs you want. What programs do you need? Uh, what kind of supports do you need? Um, and because that's um, the beauty, I think, of nonprofits is that we we have ideas and then we need to go get the funding for it. And so, but we need your support in terms of trying to identify what works for you. So I encourage you to, to look at all the websites here, including TIs um, and, and provide us input so that we can better uh, provide programs and services for the Inuit in, um, outside of Inuit Nunungat. Taima. Thanks, Amanda. And in addition to some of the websites, I know um, some of the presenters have put their Facebook pages into the chat, which is great. And also please check out those virtual booths. Uh, you can connect with the Urban Inuit Associations there as well. Um, just a reminder to everyone to, you know, if you have any other questions or just comments, let us know where you're from. Please put that in the chat. I'm sure people like always like to hear it and always like to stay connected. Just a question for everyone on the panel to think about. Um, do you have any advice or um, words of wisdom to share with the Inuit students who are near to your centers? Um, things to keep in mind, especially, you know, we're still in this pandemic. You're right, we're Zoomed out, but we're saying that on a Zoom call. So yeah, any advice for the students would be great to hear. I, um, I think it is important to stay resilient. I think it is very important to, to ask for help. I know that it takes a lot. It takes a lot of courage to ask for help. And it's okay if, if you're struggling academically. It's okay if, you know, news from your home community is affecting you and your, your mental health and your social well-being. It's okay. But there are a lot of resources out there, um, whether it is urban Inuit or organizations, it could be um, services provided at your post-secondary institutions, it could be mainstream or, um, assistance, but please ask for help. I think that there's a lot of times where, you know, the 
the the beauty of, of starting your academic journey gets eclipsed by by the fear because uh, go attending college and attending university um, can be scary. Um, the population of your schools it definitely <laughs> is more than your home community. And so it's really hard to navigate and we're not expecting you to navigate it alone. So please reach out if you're struggling with a subject or if you're studying in, in a field and contact TI. Like we provide so many programs and services, whether it's through social work, whether it is uh, justice services, whether it is um, post-secondary education, housing, um, so we can help you with your thesis, we can help you with research, we can help you with your stats on, on stuff, but, but we can't help you unless you ask. So I think that's my piece of advice, Emma. Thanks, Amanda. Um, Andrea, any words of wisdom or advice? Yeah, thank you, Amanda. Um, you, I couldn't say it any better. Um, that's true. Uh, if you do need help, uh, I would agree you should reach out, um, especially now with the pandemic. I know it's really hard. Um, it's really hard for everyone. Um, so, you know, uh, mental health issues, it, uh, I know it's stigmatized and I don't think it is anymore because um, it's hard on everyone. So if you do need help, reach out. Um, there are people out there that do want to help. So just just do it. Don't be shy. Um, tuck that fear away. Um, something I would really recommend too is connect with your elders if you can. Um, even if that's your anacha, atatacha, um, maybe your friends, um, mom or dad, or grandparents. I, I truly believe that we should be reconnecting with our elders. Um, during these times too, um, a lot of wisdom and knowledge they can share with us. Um, and it's, I think that, I really think that we should be taking care of them too. Um, so don't give up hope. This is all temporary. It's not going to last long. I know we don't know when it'll last, but it will. Um, just, just keep going. Tema, thanks. Yeah, thank you both. Um, those are excellent suggestions. Um, and and exactly what I would say as well. I, I, I don't like being the person to echo everybody else, but when, when the topic is covered so well, you can't really help it. Um, one thing that I would say is that with our organizations, you know, even, even though some of us are very small and some of us are quite large, we're all very nimble and able to change our programming as necessary. So just because you, you follow us on Facebook or Instagram and you don't see a specific service being offered that you could use, don't, that doesn't mean that we can't offer it. That doesn't mean that we can't support you. We certainly can. Um, if, if you need a new you know, driver's license ID or just picture ID or your passport or anything like that, we don't advertise those things. But if it's going to help you with your day, we'll do it. Um, so there's a lot of things that, that kind of we don't advertise, but we're able to do for you. Um, besides that, on the topic of mental health, um, we've just recently kicked off a pilot program called uh, Ikayuktiginik, um, which is about mental health literacy. And by that, I mean engaging Inuit in a way that allows us to speak more openly and frankly about our mental health and how we're doing. And it's such an important time for that when everyone is alone. You know, everyone is is stuck within their little boxes. And uh, I think that we as Inuit are, are some of the most social people. We might not all talk as much as I do. Again, I'm half Newfoundlander, um, but we need to see each other. We need to be around one another. We need to share food. And this pandemic has made all of that impossible. So don't think that we're not here because we are. Feel free to reach out, ask questions. If you're stressed about something, just let us know. There's always somebody willing to help you. Nothing. Thanks, Amanda. Um, 
Thanks, Brian. Um, I am looking at the time. I know we have just a few minutes left. I'm going to ask the uh, speakers to all think of if there's some closing remarks or last comments they'd like to share. Before we get there, I want to remind everyone that um, Erica has posted a discussion channel in the chat for Urban, Urban Inuit. So please, please go check that out. Also, you'll see some other Facebook pages there, some websites. Um, and we've had another, someone else speak up, he is joining us from Yellowknife, which is always nice to hear. And I'm going to do a one more plug on top of that to remind everyone to please fill out the student survey. I know there were some questions on the registration, but there's also a SurveyMonkey link. Uh, we want to know more about how specifically COVID has affected your, your school experiences. Even if you're not in school yet, we'd like to know how COVID's affected you. So please take the time to check those links out. And I hope that gave our panelists a, enough time to think about some last remarks. Maybe I will pass it over to, I'm looking for faces that someone's ready. It's gonna be like, oh, oh, Jim. okay, Amanda, we'll go with Amanda first. I was trying to point to Janine, <laughs> but um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to uh, share our program, TI's programs and services with uh, potential and current post-secondary students. I just want to say that we are very proud of you for, for making that decision to further your education. Education is extremely important. Um, you know, we are still part of... Um, whether it's first or just second generation of post-secondary graduates in, in our families. And so I know that taking that first step can be very um, overwhelming. And I applaud you for, for looking at ways to, to further your education. And um, that's it, Emma. Thanks, Amanda. Maybe we'll pass it over to Janine. I feel like she was close to being ready and then we cut her off. So go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you again, everybody, for, for joining us today. And um, there's there's lots of resources, like everybody's saying that, you know, they're even in your schools, most, most universities and, and schools will have Indigenous um, resources as well and, and um, programs set up at the schools. So, um, you know, a lot of students access that and, and are able to provide, you know, or, or have more of a support that way. So um, keep chasing your dreams and yeah, further on anyways, and we're, we're all going to make it and, and, and make a difference in this world. So uh, Kwana to everybody who's, who's leading this, leading this, you know, pathway and, and thank you again for everybody joining. Thanks, Andrea. Or sorry, thanks, Jenny. Maybe that's my cue to pass it over to Andrea. I've got too many names on the Zoom. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, Patika, keep going strong. You can do it. Um, you guys are the trailblazers. Just remember that. Don't forget that. Um, I don't need to say, you guys, we are very resilient. Our ancestors were really resilient. We can do this. Um, I know we can't gather as a community, but at least we can do this online for now. And that's the next best thing is at least doing everything online and video calls. Um, just stay connected when you can. Um, take care and keep going. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. We're passing it over to you, Brian. Not gonna make um, yeah, first I want to thank ITK for putting this together. Uh, it's an excellent initiative. And I think that we need to continue these conversations around how to support students. I know having been a post-secondary student, uh, how incredibly difficult and, um, and really lonely and disheartening that was. Um, so I hope that, I hope that everyone can take some comfort in the fact that things are getting better. Um, it's not easy. You know, I'm just going to say it. It's not easy. Uh, resilience isn't easy, but your, your continued existence is resilience. It's the strength of our culture and, um, and you're, you're able to do this. You're all able to do this. You can all get exactly where you want to be. Um, and you have that strength within you. 
Um, I do also want to send a shout out to um, my amazing program coordinator, Paige, who's been in the chat answering people. Um, and I know that Nooks Lindell has been a part of this program as well, which is why even though I combed out my terrible COVID mullet for this, I had to throw on a hat at the last minute and represent Hinani. Um, and also, I just love any and every opportunity to um, have these conversations with other urban Inuit organizations. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of knowledge uh, laterally uh, in Ottawa, in Edmonton, in Manitoba, and in other cities that aren't here today. So it's, it's really great to have these discussions and just acknowledge how many of these gaps we're able to collectively fill um, to make sure that urban Inuit aren't following, uh, falling through the cracks. Thank you, Brian, and thank you to all of our fantastic speakers. Thank you for taking your time on a Saturday afternoon, a beautiful Saturday afternoon, depending on where you are, to meet with all the students. I know they appreciate it as well. Um, to the students on the call, we're going to have a 15-minute uh, break, and I hope you join us for our next session, which is on Inuit research. So. Uh, I'm not being sarcastic when I say I'm really, really looking forward to that session. So hope you join us for that one as well. Thank you again to our amazing speakers. Please check out their uh, pages on the with the virtual booths and have a great afternoon, everyone. See you soon.